to go in three, two, one, click. Hi team, welcome to the Escape Podcast for Star Wars The Old Republic. This week we'll talk about Powertech and Vanguard tanking in patch 3.1.1, which was a game changer for those two classes. We'll also cover the latest SWOTOR news and the fun stuff going on in our guild, Alea Yakta Est. As usual, we have an astromech standing by to record and broadcast this show. Hey EPC82, are you ready and all set? <laughs> Wrong sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, we will talk about Powertex losing unload, but fear not, little guy, I have not lost my ability to unload Astromex into escape pods, so there you go. <laughs> Hi, Seema, how's it going? I know he's relieved by that, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure see, he's things happy. Things are going really well for me. I guess, you know, you guys probably need a garage door update because this week... Um, we've had some nice, warm, balmy days, a couple of days in a row, and we got a lot of ice melting, and I was able to shift most of the ice that had my garage door stuck and turn it back on, and so yay, I didn't have to wait for spring. Now I have a working garage door, so. Are you getting any flooding good. with all that uh, ice melt? Nope, just large lake-sized puddles, but no flooding yet, but we'll hold off on the no flood thing because you know it happens excellent um, as for SWOTOR though I started um, leveling my operative and by starting I mean you know she's 55 so I mean start leveling her to 60 and um, also by starting I mean looking at her outfit and saying you know this is so rise of the hut cartel she needs a new outfit so so far I've been working on her outfit haven't made any great decisions yet, but I'm I'm also lamenting the fact that I didn't do this during the recent double XP time because you know now I want to do it then it, then I didn't so that that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. I did get a chance to do the the little class story on Rishi, and I really really liked it. I. It, it it had, you know, some follow-on to it. one of the characters in the agent story that I really liked and was a major character. And it made me hope that we hear more from and about this character as the rest of the story progresses. So, yes. So how many have you done the the extra story, character story on Rishion? I would say four characters. Excellent. How about you? Um, maybe about the same, and they are good. I like them. I like yeah. the, I like the Vanguard they're... one. I like the I like the the merc the uh, the mercenary one. Yeah, they're good. And they're not a huge time investment. I mean, I recommend doing them. They don't. It's not like it's going to take you all over the galaxy and you know be an hour or anything. It's so it's, it's pretty contained right there on Rishi and yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, I, f I forgot what the Sork was one was. I did that one too. Still, yeah, they're. they're I good like stuff. the Trooper one. Be you you finally get a chance. Well, I finally got a chance to tell Garza what I really think. Because <laughs> all through leveling, I was always taking the "Yes, I'm a good soldier" answers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That was a that's a that's a good little side story there. Yeah. Um, let's see, Ops. For Ops this week, we were actually, um, we, we had surprise Ops because we were going to cancel because we were missing two key people, our raid leader and um, um, one of our DPS, so uh, Makia and Dinesh. But um, somebody got off their butts and got us some, some uh, subs, and that would be Spherix. And so we had um, Ops last week and then Ops again this week. And uh, yeah, that was really a lot of fun. We did, um, we just did sca uh, the Ravagers and then the first boss in um, Temple of Sacrifice. But yeah, thanks to the people who helped us out there. That would be Sar, Haruk, 
and Corley. They made it happen. Excellent. And then on Mandatory Fun Night, we had exciting night pony times in Explosive Conflict. Always fun. Um, we got, did we get a tank vehicle drop this time? We I know we got the other vehicle yeah. that um, Kephas drops. We did not get a tank vehicle. We did get, I think, two of the tank decorations. And then we got Kephas' yeah. special vehicle. And we got the the big turret decoration from Kephas. So still good yeah, stuff. Yeah, because it's all about the cosmetic drops at this point. Yeah, it's all about um, Kephas' base. So basically what I'm saying is it's all about that base. <laughs> Why did I not see that coming? <laughs> I should just know by now. <laughs> and then afterwards, we did um, the Rishi Datacrons, which was largely due, you know, thanks to Max for having farmed all this, the um, the data packets from the rare drops, which turned out to be quite a time investment. I'll let him touch on that, but I right. really appreciated it. Yeah, that worked out well. And then lately, sort of apropos of nothing, I've been listening to a lot of gypsy jazz, which is also uh, known to people as hot jazz, gypsy swing. Some people call it jazz manouche. But um, I first heard about it in college when a music professor was telling me about Django Reinhardt, who's a guitarist in the 30s and 40s. And he kind of created this file, this, this style at the time, which was kind of a fusion of jazz and or swing, I wish should say, and his gypsy roots. And it's just this really happy, melodic, rhythmic, lots of notes, though, but just it's like the music of happiness. Um, it, but even though it's he, he was in the 30s and 40s, he's been popular pretty much ever since with some dips and stuff. But there's, there's lots of modern bands doing this style of music, too. Like in the U.S., there's a group called Pearl Django. There's the Hot Club of San Francisco. There's the Hot Club of Detroit. There's a Norwegian hot club called Hot Club of Norway. Hmm. And there's, of course, there's lots of French groups because Django Reinhardt was French. And then his, his um, cohort, Stefan Grappelli, who's a fiddler um, also. So um, it's very happy, upbeat music. And it's really can turn your day around just to listen to it. So I, so I totally recommend it. Um, yeah, so check it out. If you've never heard of Django Reinhardt, I... I, you're in for a treat. Just YouTube it or look them up on Spotify or, you know, whatever your music listening style is. I'm, I'm sure you'll find a lot of music in that. Oh, and a, and a guitarist I just found out about last week. His name is Borelli Lagren. He plays in this style, but he's like some kind of X-Man or Avenger of guitar music because he does things on his guitar that I didn't even know were possible. It's just incredible to watch them and listen to them. So huh. anyway, that's what I've been doing with my ear holes this week. That's why I'm behind on my books and stuff. Very interesting. So how about you, Max? What have you been up to? Let's see. So a lot of the in-game stuff, still keeping up with a little bit of PvP on my Sork. My son was in from college. This is a first year at St. Louis University. So he was in. He's pretty good at PvP, so we did some together this week. That was pretty fun. I did do, as we said, the, the Tuesday fun night. We did that explosive conflict and then did go after the Datacrons on Rishi. That was quite a little adventure to try to get all the data packets off of those rare spawn Grofits like we described last week. It was more of a challenge than I had expected. It took me a while. I basically put three characters, one at each of the spawn locations for those Grafits, and then just cycled in because there's a respawn time of four minutes and 30 seconds for, for the placeholders that you're waiting for to get the rare spawn. And I just kept logging into each of those characters going around once every, uh, once every four and a half minutes. And it took me all day. And amazingly, you know, RNG, in the about the last half hour so I, I i'd say i did it over the course of about three hours um so all day but that was over the course of a, of a couple one hour segments while i was on work conference calls or whatever but right before ops with about a half hour to go i logged in and got like 
four more of the data packets. So by the end I had, I was afraid I was going to get none and ended up getting enough for two full sets. So I still have another full set in the bank. Maybe we'll do it on the Republic side um, some other night. But we were Ooh, able cool. to crack it open and go get everyone both summoned into there, summon multiple characters. And it stays open for a long, long time. I don't, and we, we couldn't even figure out how long it stays open or what the triggers are. It almost seemed like as long as you're standing there or someone's standing there, it either stays open that long, because it was at least 45 minutes, if not longer. Um, or maybe it just on that map, it stays open until the server restarts. We, we, and you don't have to be in the ops group or no. anything that we were in to to click it. So, yeah, if you, it might even be worth just checking the location when you're you know, on Rishi doing dailies in case someone has opened it up recently. Yes, which, in fact, I logged back in yesterday when I was messing, messing with my tank, my new tank, and it was open, and I summoned some more people from the, the guild over there. Oh, again. nice. Because I just, I happen to have that character still there. Actually, this character that's up on the screen right now, which is my power tech, which we'll be talking about. So that's another thing I did this past week. I finished gearing up this power tech, and we'll talk about that in detail, about what I did and wh how I did it and why and what order and and everything about power tech Vanguard tanking that I relearned because I had done some on my Vanguard for, for a while, but things have changed obviously since 3.0 and in 3.11 specifically. Uh, Ravagers was of course fun and easy. That's That was good to get through. And it, we already mentioned Explosive Conflict, that was good. That's That was a fun run and we had a full group of, of 16. Everybody's trying to get in there and get some of those tank mounts. And besides that, I did not do our GSF fun night on Saturday night because my youngest daughter had a birthday. Her birthday was actually Friday. It was her 13th birthday on Friday the 13th. Oh, wow. But we had some family over for that birthday on Saturday, which was Pi Day. So for her birthday, we had Pi. And, <laughs> and we also had some Irish Stout. And various other Irish music playing, too, because there's a whole confluence of things going on, I guess, Friday the 13th and Pi Day and St. Patrick's Day and my daughter's birthday. So it was quite I hope you quite gave your guest actual pie, actual P-I-E pie, yes. and didn't just give them a number. Okay. All right. my, well, my sister brought it, and it was a, a, a pie from the, from the local town bakery with a pie symbol um, drawn <laughs> nice. on the top as well. <laughs> But with that, I think we can hit some news. Continuing our coverage. Now an Imperial News Network report. So in news this week, um, patch 3.1.1 is in. You probably know this by now. You probably, If you have visited Rishi, you know the biggest feature of the patch is that part of uh, Ravager's Cove is now invisible. <laughs> Do not fear, though. You won't fall through. Just keep going you'll get to where you're going um, the updated notes are up if you look at um, swotor.com slash patch notes and they go into quite a bit of detail on bug fixes tuning for flashpoints and op operations and um, the changes that they've made to the various classes including when we're going to be talking about tonight um, or include will be include what we talk about tonight, which is that unload in full auto no longer available for Pyrotex and Vanguard. It's a game changer. Yes, it is. No, not really, but go ahead. <laughs> in PvP news, Bioware has sent out a bunch of notices apparently to ranked PvP players who are being flagged as potential win traders. They have a whole series of data analytics now that seems to be going through and they're using their data tools to, to make these assessments. They're gonna to try to be real careful not to sweep other people in along the way. There were some posts in the forums, people saying, hey, I, I wasn't in this at all, but I got one of these notices, what's the deal? They're gonna be tuning up that, that data analytics over time, but they are taking these steps to try to clean up ranked queues and make sure that win trading isn't going on. So that's that seems positive. So it does the notice go out to like their email of record or yes an in an in game notice okay 
So it goes out to the, the email, email address associated with the account, I believe. And then that account is on notice. And they said that was only the first round. They will potentially even be taking further action against the most egregious offenders, people that are were obviously win trading for significant amounts of time and impacting their ranked um, their rankings as a result. I, I give them uh, props for giving it a shot. I know it's a tricky, tricky thing to be addressing. Yep. Yeah. Good luck to them. Also in the news this week, the BioWare Cantina Tour continues except for April 18th in Anaheim. And uh, there's a special note that attendees will get a special mount code. They said in the post, a printaway congregate, but I do not know what that is. I haven't looked, I tried to find something similar on the GTN, but didn't come across it yet. Um, there's also gonna be a special appearance by the 501st Legion, uh, Vader's First Legion which is the world's definitive imperial costuming organization. That's how they describe themselves on their website. So that should be very interesting. Really? So they're very into high quality costuming and then they are active also in charity. So I'm curious to see um, what their uh, special appearance will involve. I, I assume they'll show up in costume. Those guys are um, amazing. They're, they're amazing for multiple reasons. One's just amazing costumes, but then the charity work that they do is is excellent too. There's so many good photos out there for, of, of them. They're, they all make their own costumes, so they're, they're perfectly done. And then they, there's photos of them like, like shaking hands with little kids that they're, that they're raising funds for, disadvantaged kids, handicapped kids, and some really touching stuff um, that, that they do great you know props to those guys i'd love to to visit with them and see them sometime me too and um also at this cantina they say they're gonna have a green screen area for photos so you don't know maybe you can set up your back your favorite background from the game and have yourself uh, photoed photoed into it like this one um, on, on narshada which... so <laughs> <laughs> yes yes in front of yes me now. like that one max awesome <laughs> exactly like that um, there was a dev tracker note that this won't be the only way to get this mount. There, there will be other ways. I'm thinking probably associated with other live streams, or maybe they're going to talk about it more at the next live stream, but there's going to have other other giveaways involving this mount. Right. And then if you want to read more about it or read it again, it's it just go SWOTOR.com um, and then click on the blog. Yep. There's a button for the blog. Uh, Guild News, standard Guild News this week. The mandatory fun night will go on on Tuesday. I hope I may or <laughs> we'll, we'll see by the time this goes out. I will we'll see. I have a business trip. I need to be out of town on the road on Tuesday night. So it'll either Stupid go on business. without me or I'll I'll be able to to get in from where I'm where I'm at in business in, in Indianapolis. Uh, I don't know if we can go on without you. I mean. It is I'm sure maxatory it, fun night after all. It, will, it could go on. And then, of course, GSF on Saturdays. And what do we have in ops this week? <laughs> do we have... Well, yes. Our two missing people that affect almost all our ops teams are back. Um, so ops should be back on the menu this week. So look out, bosses. Yes, it's already started up tonight, I noticed. We had the Republic ops team running tonight. We'll have... More ops teams hey. running all week. I'm happy because we're going to be getting back and we're going to be clearing all of Temple of Sacrifice. That yes, we, <laughs> yes, because we have that all on farm. Yes. Um, we also have uh, AIE, the umbrella guild that our guild is a part of, has been doing some work on a new guild website. So it's fancy schmancy. And we have a new page for our SWOTOR part of the world. So... Jeez, check it out, I suppose. Yep. And finally, uh, be sure to also check out our streams on occasion. We have streams uh, for a few of our guild members, and I've been putting those in, in the show notes. And then we also have, um, we're starting to, again, stream the podcast. So for those in the chat room now and watching on the stream or watching it later when we post it to YouTube, Hello, 
uh, will continue to do that. I think I've got it. I think I've got it running, and I think I've got my my audio tuned up so it it uh, will show up better on the stream and in YouTube. We'll see how it it comes out on the uh, on the recording as well. Make sure it all st all still works. And if it's working, we'll keep it up. So feel free to join the chat room and say hi, and uh, we'll we'll keep that rolling. And that can be found on twitch.tv slash new overlords for the the ones I do for our Thursday, our Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday operations nights and the podcast on Monday nights. But with that, we can talk about what I've been doing this week. I've been suiting up. Stuck. We got him. Banner? Just like you said. Then tell him to suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. Yes. Wait, there's a party? <laughs> Yes, there is a party. Wait, this this doesn't look like a party t to me. That's what Scarlett Johansson says right after that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So yes, I've been suiting up. And what I've been doing is I, I had my power attack and my vanguard. I leveled them both to 60. I leveled them as DPS, and I wanted to get back into tanking. I had tanked before on my vanguard. I had tanking gear. But not since I hit 60. So over the course of the past two weeks, I've been brushing up on the changes to tanking on the PowerTech Vanguard that came with 3.0, as well as what I needed to do to get outfitted with level 60 gear. So what I did, I'll talk about, I'll talk about the class in general and some of the guide information and what I found in the forums and what I based my approach on, and then I'll talk specifically about what I did, and we can trade information you and I Seema as we go and start also talking about how it affects how you heal Vanguard tanks and power tech tanks specifically. But if you go down the list of the things that you think about when you go trying to gear up a new character or a, a tank specifically, spec isn't an issue anymore because you're just picking the tanking tree for any of the tank classes so you don't need to worry about the trees anymore so that's fine but there's still the utility talents and the utility talents, from what I've seen for most of the tanks, especially for the Power Attack Vanguard, have a lot more flexibility on what you probably want to be taking than, than, the, than I found even for DPS on my Mercenary, for example. There are talents that help you move, move faster, move better. There are talents that reduce AoE damage. There are talents that affect a couple of your abilities, like your, your Sonic Rebounder. There are talents that affect your... Uh, your your uh, rocket your uh, shoulder rockets and and turn that into a heal you definitely want that one you're going to want to look at those talents and there's a couple guides out there and there's a couple discussions in the forums that talk about optimizing that talent set basically from from fight to fight in every current fight uh, story mode or hard mode ravagers and temple sacrifice um, changing that utility set as you go there's some basic ones, and I I I'm, I picked a, a sort of a blended set that's that's relatively common, mostly focused on movement with a couple of the the boosts in there, and I could probably run that with anything in story mode, and most people could, but if you're especially if you're doing hard mode, you may be tweaking that utility set as you go from fight to fight. And then I looked at gear, so when you look at gear, you'd need to look at what's the latest update for how stats should be balanced for a tank and you're really looking most closely at endurance to some degree um, and then it's shield absorb and defense and what I found when I was looking at that is shield absorb and defense optimal ratios have not really changed as the amounts of each of those go up and the theory crafters did a good job even before 3.0 in saying at at this relative gear level, this should be the mix of shield absorb defense. As you go up, as your shield gets higher, say you're just you're just picking shield. As your shield is at 1700, this is what your absorb and defense should be to to be optimally balanced. When your shield gets up to 1800, this is what it should be. You can find those posts in the forums, and that's mostly what I went off of just to just to know what I should be going after. Um, to to understand the stats at least but then I also had to figure out where I was gonna get that starting gear and I had stacks and stacks of basic comms so that's the other thing I did is I first went out and used all my basic comms to get all of the basic uh, the basic pieces of gear 
<laughs> like a starting point. Yeah, as 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 the starting point to get my, you know, my head, chest, gloves, waist, legs, boots, and bracers. I got all of those with at at one eighty six. Just the demolisher set off of the basic com vendor on the fleet. I also got the demolisher earpiece and implants. I and and I think I got the offhand. Uh, for the main hand, I got pieces that were optimal off of another one of those 186 pieces, and I bought myself a barrel, a uh, 186 barrel. And and then I also, I think I bought, although I, I could probably make, I just don't think I have it at purple yet, I bought the two relics that I needed, which are Fortunate Redoubt and Reactive Warding. Um, and then we were, we were talking yesterday, and we noticed SEMA... So fortunate readout reactive warding are two useful relics that tanks uses you uses <laughs> that tanks use <laughs> and then every other class and spec uses serendipitous oh, salt serendip yeah which right well, even healers right it's in focus retribution yeah yeah it, it's the same for everybody so there's a bunch of other relics in the game but nobody uses <laughs> I don't even know why they put them in so unless they get suckered into them because there's you know there's ones that look like they are four healers but really the the two that we mentioned are the ones that give you the most benefit. Right. Right. The most boost your healing. You're you're right. There's there's a couple there that look like they're they sh they should be for the healers but are not. So don't uh don't uh don't don't be confused. So I went and got I mean kind of a third Kind of a third choice or or an additional second choice is a is that boundless ages one, and right. you might want you might prefer that in a situation where you want to control True. when it procs because it's an unused one. So if you if you want to, yeah, play style thing. Exactly, exactly. So that that is situationally that that might be interesting from from time to time. Another thing that I found with, with the stat balance is there is a school of thought out there, especially with the high-end progression guilds that are over-statting or st statting very highly for endurance. Um, in general, that's not the, the theory crafter way to, to go about uh, balancing your tank gear. Um, there are, though, especially in the hard mode fights, a couple of the hard mode fights, there is some spike damage that that needs to be mitigated by having a high enough health pool for one and for two. And I don't know if this is just the way their, their balance is. And I'm expecting maybe this is the, the balance of where they have their, their abilities and how those fights are balanced, but potentially healing in those fights might be a little easier to do than compensating for burst and, and spike damage that's coming off the bosses. So they're they're balancing their endurance quite a bit higher to get higher to get larger health pools. That's giving more time buffer for healers to be able to to do what they need to do. The downside of of that in general for for most other content is that specking for shield absorb and defense is going to mitigate damage that your healers will not have to heal, and in that case it takes the pressure off the healers. So especially when you have healers that are either gearing up or healing intensive fights where the lot, a lot of the, op, the rest of the operations team is taking a lot of damage, having that damage not have to be healed off the tank is typically optimal. So you'll have to look at that and you'll have to look at the content you're doing. I just thought that was an, an interesting uh, argument and dis discussion that was going on in a couple of places. And finally on the gear, uh, for those watching the stream, I picked this legacy set. So that was actually the first thing I did <laughs> was was <laughs> pick pick the legacy gear and the, and the look I wanted. It's mostly all just this Dreadhost gear off of um, uh, Oricon that you get off of the rep vendor for Oricon, but the chest piece is the Contract Hunter's chest guard because I didn't like the the chest piece off of the Dreadhost gear set because it's got a, um, a loincloth, which I was not fond of. <laughs> and then I had to, I had to dye it gray, of course, because I am Max the Gray. 
Oh my gosh. So yes, that, of course. So that was the deal. So it's it's gray white dye and it looks good on both my it looks actually better on my my Vanguard. He's type 4, but my type or type type 3. He's <laughs> he's he's type 3. My type 2 uh Zabrak PowerTech looks pretty good in it. The shoulders look a little weird, but it's it's good enough. And I will have this that I can share at least the main pieces back and forth between my Vanguard and my PowerTech. So, there's that. Then, after looking at gear, I went and looked at abilities and rotation. You do have a bit of a switch in the abilities, and this was sort of that game changer that I was alluding to in 3.1.1. There was the opportunity to, in your basic rotation, as a power tech or vanguard, to be using unload on a power tech and its uh, full auto for the vanguard. Uh, that was that was part of the uh, rotation. It was a relatively good amount of damage. And in this patch, 3.1.1, which went live this past week, that has been removed from the Power Tech and Vanguard class. So we don't need to spend a lot of time on a little bit of drama that's out there around removing that ability because people did like it and, and found use use for it in multiple situations. It was situational though, and if you looked at the theory crafting, it wasn't all that useful in the main rotation for either a Vanguard or a Power Tech in in DPS. And it was it was in the rotation for tanks, but it, it can be compensated for in, in other ways. That said, since that's out, you're gonna be using rapid shots a little bit more in its place, but that's one of the lower priority abilities. So I looked at the abilities, and with the utility talent that's giving you, I think I think it's a, a utility talent that does it, um, but shoulder cannon is actually relatively important these days. Or maybe it's maybe it comes just in the tree, or is it or is it one of these utility talents? No, it's 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 one of the heroic utility talents called shield cannon, and what that does is your sho your shoulder cannon heals you for five percent of your health. Um, what you want to be doing then, if you want to use it optimally, is make sure you're not at 100% health when you're using your shield cannon. And instead of just spamming it constantly for the little extra damage it does, using it more optimally to fill in a little bit of, of, of damage and f fill in a little bit of health when you need to over time at various points in the fight. So I, th I thought that was interesting, and I've been trying to watch when I use that and how I use shoulder cannon in order to compensate. There are a couple other key abilities which are fun to use too, and it probably is useful for, for healers and other classes to know when, when these are being used and what's going on. So Heat Blast has to be used when you have three stacks of Heat Screen, and this is the, the power tech names for these. Um, it's it's a, ubil a ability that comes off of those stacks, and when you use it, it actually gives you a 25% absorb bonus um, for some amount of time. So this is a key mitigation ability that you, and it also does some damage, but it's a key mit mitigation ability that you need to be throwing out there on cooldown as soon as you get those three stacks. So don't, don't, so, so there's, there's two abilities just to start that you, main abilities in your rotation that are either healing you or giving you better, you know, are, are sort of defensive abilities. Um, then you're doing stuff like rocket punch and rail shot. Those are still useful, especially in the initial pulls, and I'll talk about proper proper initial pull and taunting. And Firestorm. Firestorm is the replacement for Flamethrower. It's your AoE, Conal AoE. That's your upgraded ability. Um, but that also, what that does when you, ca when you spray Firestorm over, I think, up to eight mobs in a cone in front of you, you put a 5% damage reduction on those mobs so it's definitely useful in general when you're when you're fighting uh, even single target but it's certainly useful when you're doing um, multiple targets AoE um, uh, m group of mobs and then I, I moved rapid shot so if you look if you look at my bar I've got uh, rapid shot on number four which is where I put one of my most used abilities because every other ability in that main rotation will have a cooldown. So I'll be spamming rapid shot and I can spam that while I'm moving if I if I need to and I'm not doing something else. Um, on AoE and well well and, and single target I I shouldn't uh, for, forget to mention jet charge. 
which is fun. <laughs> it's that's the gap closer uh, that launches you in. Um, you get to jump around with that. I d I wish I had Jet Charger on my PowerTech and Vanguard and DPS bikes too. I think I think we should get that. That would be really useful for a gap closer, especially since they took away unload. They I would love it if they would give us Jet Charge if we can't do anything at ranged anyway and we don't have any gap closer. I would love to have Jet, have jet yeah. Charge. Yeah. You, you you need a gap closer for sure. I would think. But we don't. Uh, we do have grapple in all the specs. You can also use grapple in tanking for situationally to pull someone to you. But jet charge is a little more useful because it does a couple other things. Especially for AOE, what jet jar charge does is it gives you two free, no resource used flame sweeps. So if you jet charge in, you can ultimately do a couple flame sweeps for free and not build up a lot of... Uh, uh, heat or use a lot of ammo but in AOE you're gonna jump in use your jet charge you're gonna do firestorm you're gonna do death from above and then you're gonna pop off a couple flame sweeps um, in both the single target and the AOE I'll talk about taunts taunts will be thrown in in your main rotation especially when you first jump in um, so you'll need to know what those are you need to know what your AOE taunt is and what your what your regular taunt is and use them proactively as part of your rotation. So we'll get into that too. Um, and then you are probably most interested, Seema, in, and you probably have, have some idea of what these are, but the cooldowns. So the, the defensive cooldowns that a power tech and Vanguard have are actually quite a bit more than I thought, and potentially even more than, than they were before when I was when I was tanking pre, way, way, you know, way long. It was actually probably like a year ago now. <laughs> Or, or more. You got Maybe the obvious more. energy shield, but I didn't realize that explosive fuel, which is sort of that, you know, for the DPS specs, it's that, it's that, you know, that damage boost cooldown um, that you have. Explosive fuel in tank spec gives you a damage reduction as well for uh, increases your defense chance by 35% for 15 seconds. So that's pretty big. It, you know, it also it boosts your damage a little bit, but that's a pretty big defensive cooldown that should be used relatively often by Vanguard um, and PowerTech. Uh, Coltal Overload, which if, as your hit points drop below 35%, it will heal you back up to 35%. So that's more of an oh crap, you know, when you're getting extra low, that's going to help take the pressure off the healers down below 35%. I did notice in the patch notes for what's currently on the PTS, that they're upping that that percentage of health to 40. So when you drop below 40%, oh. it will heal you back up to 40%. So make it a little bit easier to use, I guess. Yes, and a little bit less problematic because you, you're not you're not way down below that. You know, you're you're not as low as as you were before. So it's going to help you out a little bit. Um, what else? Uh. Absorb adrenals. Do you see our tanks? Uh, do our tanks use uh, adrenals for oh crap situations? We we typically don't have to, I don't think. But I, I bet in hard mode content, having a stack of absorb adrenals might be pretty useful. You can only use I one per be, yeah. fight, but that would be a good you know to to know when the right time to use that is when the right spike damage is coming up. Well, I mean, some fights are. You can use them twice, right? Right. Yeah, I guess. I guess if it's long enough. I, I, I take it back. Most fights you can probably use it twice if you're popping it right in the beginning. But right. You but why would you right if it's a yeah? <laughs> right. I mean, you're not running in and di well. Yeah. True. <laughs> true. Some of those some of those fights hit. You know, there's a big a big yeah. massive hit right in the beginning. Under Lurker yeah. does that a little bit, doesn't he? It was Xeno. Remember, Xeno Analyst was doing that. Oh, right. Right, it was. Mode. Yeah. Yeah, right off. It was doing a big smack in the face. Uh, certainly have some med packs on hand. Uh, certainly use your oil slick, which reduces the enemy's accuracy by 30% while they're in the area where the oil slick has bubbled over the ground. If fun, fun side game play with your your oil slick on various types of terrain and it it maps the surface <laughs> of the terrain in really cool ways 
Oh, neat. Somebody was dropping it. I, f I forgot who one of our guildies was dropping it when we, were out, when we were on those bumpy rocks where the Rishi data crowns are. And it would, yeah. it would flow upwards and then back down and sort of follow the, the surface of those bumpy rocks. It was really cool. And then finally, especially if you have the utility talent for it, <clears throat> Sonic Rebounder, which is your AoE taunt, also reflects the next incoming attack on a bunch of your ops team members who are in range of the Sonic Rebounder that when, when it gets shot. It doesn't affect you, but it does reflect damage going to them. Which tart, which helps um, take off some of that uh, some of that raid damage. It is uh, here. I can I can double check here. It does require the masterful level talent for Sonic re uh, utility point for Sonic Rebounder in your in your utility build to make that work. Um, but that's it. So f so for the sort of for the cooldowns. I saw a couple cool or good descriptions of use of cooldowns that I liked. I liked the sound of, I liked the theory. And that was to not be overly conservative with your cooldowns and like only use them as oh crap buttons when you're when you're already right. really low. Um, and I, I'm, I agree I with that. I would vote for that. Yeah, do you? Right, because if you save them for emergencies, then you get out of the habit of using them. Right. Right. You get out of the habit of using them. You're only using them when things have already potentially gone bad. So yes, it could save things, but you didn't prevent yourself from getting into that situation in the first place. And three, you don't get optimal use out of them. So if you can energy shield once, what's, what's the cooldown on, on energy shield? If you can energy shield once every two minutes, but you only use it once every four minutes, you're getting 50% of the use of, of energy shield. That's a good point, yeah. So if you're using it more often, you're getting more value out of it. So I like I liked that. It, it made me think, yes, I should be using them more. Maybe, maybe know when to reserve which uh, cooldown is probably optimal for, for pro tanks, but being able to use some of the other cooldowns proactively to re be reducing the the load on the healers and and be preventing that damage up front and not getting yourself into that situation when you're down at you know 20 percent 10 percent probably helps so that that gets me to my notes on taunting so the way taunts work in swotor is that they are a multiplier against the highest damage the highest threat currently on the mob that you're taunting and what this means is if you lead into a fight if you pull with a taunt, your taunt is 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 doing zero. It's 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 <laughs> zero threat. It's it's, mul it's multiplying by zero, <laughs> and it's it's losing a lot of its ability. You still get the sort of the six seconds that the the mob will will be uh, on you, but you're you're getting zero threat multiplier. So all of the rotations, and when you look at all of the guides and all of the the pro tankers who will will be describing what you need to do. You need to go in with your highest hitting, first couple highest hitting abilities, and then taunt. So you're getting off two or three of your highest hitting, highest damage abilities, and then taunting. And what it'll do is when you're in melee range, it will take all of the damage you've done and multi and, and add another 30% on top of that, and then do that, that will be your threat. If you have range DPS, so it's a little bit more difficult with melee DPS, but ranged DPS have a slightly th lower th threat threshold that they need to achieve in order to pull threat off of you. So they would need to be doing 100 and I, th I think they need to be doing 130, 110, more, th more than the 100% the of the threat that you currently have on the mob to pull off of you. So in that case, if you get those high damage abilities out there and then pop your taunt, you've already then jumped ahead of where they are. Then you're going to do more of your high damage abilities and your high threat abilities. And you'll be ahead of them and you'll be outrunning them in threat in no time. So definitely do that. Same with AoE. You want to jump in with your jet charge. You want to do a firestorm, which 
which puts a bunch of damage on all of all of the mobs. You want to drop a death from above, and if you can do it without still not having to do your taunt and do a, a couple flame sweeps also, and then do your AoE taunt, all of a sudden you've damaged all of those mobs quite a bit. Now you do your AoE taunt and you multiply that damage, and you'll keep ahead of Sage Forestorm. <laughs> So so say let's say you're the tank who's responsible for picking up the puppies in um the sparky fight. Yep. So like a puppy comes out, you'd hit it. You may never taunt it then, right? Cuz 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 another puppy's going to come out right away. I mean, how 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 do you do that? So yeah, that may be the or case. Pretty, pretty soon anyway. So what you'll probably want to have is the DPS should all be focused. When, when they're doing that. So you may need to taunt the, the first one. You may need to do a couple points of damage, you know, a couple, a couple big hits into it and a, and a taunt to hold it. Then what you do is now you've got, you've got a little bit ahead on that one. Now another one's going to be coming out soon, right? So, right. And, I see, and this is what I see Machia do and, and, and Brew do all the time, is maybe keep up a couple, a couple shots on that, that dog to, to stay ahead a little bit. But now you start focusing on that second one and building up your 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 threat on that second one while the DPS are still back on the first one. Um, your your single target taunt is on a cooldown of 15 seconds. So as you're going, then you put a couple shots into that second one, and then you can go off and taunt that second one. Use of taunts. But let's say Good. that second one is coming in from a corner on the far side of the room. I mean, it seems like it would be so tempting to just toss a taunt, you know, because it has more range to bring it over to you. Yes. Especially if the DPS are all in that, still in that first dog. Yes, it certainly would. The pull abilities, though, of tanks are a high threat ability. Okay. So I would expect oh, okay. the shadows and the and the the vanguard to be using grapple and to be using force grip and and those kinds of things in that case too, to get that little extra high threat pull, get that thing over to me, either pull it over to me or, ta you know, basically that's going to be a little, a little bit of a high threat ability to get it to me. Um, and then my taunt comes off of, of cooldown if it still decides that it wants to go after a healer in, in that time. Um, it definitely gets a little tricky when you have boss fights which require a tank swap because a tank swap is what typically requires a, a taunt. So in those right. cases, you're going to need to either be creative with your taunts. If there's not a lot, a lot of trash or no trash, you can trade off between your AoE taunt and your single target taunt between two tanks that are trading back and forth if they need to pick up a, a second mob once in a while or just need an oh crap ability. But again, with a single target and a, a, a single target fight, you get it, the tanks get ahead very quickly. And that taunt is a multiplier early on. We'll get them ahead quickly, and the DPS will not catch up. So, any questions on that, Seema? I've been talking <laughs> quite quite a bit. Well, I mean, going back to cooldowns, I guess from my perspective, what what you said about using them sort of early and often, I I really. I know the t the tendency must be to like I gotta save it until I need it, but it's it's the better you the more even you can keep your health, the more likely you are to be healable. Like you said, if you get down under ten percent, at that point it's almost like nothing we do, no no cooldowns that we have right. are gonna pull you out of that spiral. Right, absolutely not. And if you think of what we talked about with some of those hard mode teams specking for additional endurance because they know there's this giant spike damage, using your cooldowns proactively to stay above that spike threshold, you could, you could see that being critical. Yeah, So right. And then another thing I was thinking of while you're talking is what makes the biggest difference, I think, is if you know the fight and you know when the damage is coming. Yes. Because then you can um, make informed decisions about your cooldowns. Just like I try to know the fight so that I know how close I have to be to the tank so, or where the tank's going to be so that I'll be there when they take that spike. Yep. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like the other side of the same coin. Yeah, absolutely. 
And then finally to wrap it up, I'll talk about one other thing I did, which was after I got my gear and I got my, and I did all my augments, so I went with all shield augments, so I'm over shielded at this point, but shield is definitely um, tougher to get in the gear and I'll up my absorb, but my defense is, is fine and defense is easy to get. Um, but then what I did is I went to practice. And what I went to do to practice, I happened to log in by those data crowns on Rishi. And there's a pack of five strong of those giant shore crabs right there by those data crowns. And they keep killing people every time people are coming down to get those data crowns. Because <laughs> you can't go around them because then you're in like the, you're in the, the exhaustion, the exhaustion zone. zone. Yeah. So people keep getting, keep wiping on those. So I have a Mako as my main healer, but she doesn't have great gear on she's got a couple 180 pieces but she had no implants and no no earpiece and her main hand weapon was like a level 40 green <laughs> so that's a good test right yeah so so it's not like she was overhealing me i was definitely taking a lot of damage in fact the first time i came through on those i wasn't prepared i wasn't looking at what i was doing and that pack of five killed me when i was because i was going to check out the the data crowns um so I, those were a good test so I, I went after those guys. I used my AOE taunts. I tried to make sure that, that you know, not, none of them were going off after, after Mako. I, I did my AOE, AOE rotation on them um, with, with the AOE taunt after getting a couple bits of, of damage into them. And then I, then I just I tanked them the rest of the way. I used my cooldowns, um, tried to use them all over time, tried to use my shoulder cannon, made sure I was being optimal with all of that, and kept myself alive. And I did that, I, I put on Netflix and those things just kept spawning and I just kept going up and down the coast with the pairs of them, with the couple of the elites that spawn in that area, and then that pack of five over and over and over again, probably for at least 45 minutes. Then I also chased down, there's a couple up closer to the Rishi village, there's a couple champion groffets, those big, big groffets out there. Right. Then I went after a couple of those. Um, they're not too hard, but it still gave me an idea of what a longer fight is is like and how the rotation of cooldowns felt like on a longer fight. And then we moved on that night to get back into some actual hard mode. We just did level 50 hard mode, CZ198, but it was actually able to go in there and, and play with it with some, some geared DPS and and try to make sure I was it was moving the bosses around that 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 one in CZ198 the uh, that has the two bio domes as you said Sima when right. we went in there right. um, you you were right it was good because you do need to move those two bosses around each of their their areas in uh, in in those two bio dome areas because they have to yes they have to be moved moved around and you have to either pop the mushrooms in the one area to put the debuff on the boss or in the other area you have to do the you have to have the boss do the slam on the sh on the j storm generators um so you're yeah if you don't have a tank to drag them around you have everyone has to go yeah and do it and that that doesn't always happen so that got me back into the rhythm of of positioning the mobs and and uh and got me, you know, again, further practice with my rotation and feel, feeling, get, getting that feel of, of tanking back under my fingers. So it was good. I, and I think I'm ready to, to jump into whatever whatever comes my way at this point. At least that can take 186 geared tank. <laughs> so Hard mode underlooker. <laughs> right. 186. <laughs> oh, wait, I missed that part <laughs> about the 186. Not. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so I recommend it. It's a fun class, and I will be tanking more. So um, let me know if you have any questions, and it should be fun. But I, I think with that, our little EPC-82 droid here is is ready to be unloaded into the escape pod, and I'm going to set him for full auto, and he will <laughs> drift off into space. <laughs> so thanks full for auto. listening. For comments or questions, please follow us on Twitter, at MaxTheGray and at AIECMA. Or find us on Jedi Covenant and ask for a guild invite. Our character names and AIE guild information are in the show notes or can be searched out anywhere on the web, including Facebook Google, or Google+. And be sure to check out the show notes for our Twitch stream information, including the ones that I do and a couple that go on for a couple of our other ops teams, including our Wednesday night sub ops team. So check that out. 
And finally, thank you to everyone that was in the chat room. We did have a, a few people in there over the course of the night. I will, I've, I've not been paying as much attention to the chat room this, this time, so I was less distracted. But Yavin JC uh, definitely said hi again, and I really appreciate that. He's, he's always in, uh, saying hi on Twitter and in the, in the chat room, and Arvashet's been in the chat room uh, the whole time as well, as well as a couple other people filtering in and out. But with that, I will say good night. Later, guys.